The International Space Station is entering its final days. Although it was originally designed with a lifespan of 10 to 15 years, this space station is operated for twice its intended duration is now showing alarming signs of degradation. Many experts are concerned about whether the station can maintain a safe environment for astronauts over the next five years. So, join us here on Alpha Tech to get into the details of the challenges the ISS is facing and the potential solutions to keep it operational at least until the end of the decade. The roots of the ISS trace back to 1984 when U.S. President Ronald Reagan proposed the creation of a space station known as Space Station Freedom. Reagan's vision called for a permanently manned space station that would serve as a platform for scientific research, international cooperation, and a stepping stone for further exploration beyond Earth's orbit. The directive was clear. NASA was to develop the space station within a decade, aiming for completion by the early 90s. However, the road to building the ISS was far from smooth. A series of delays, budget cuts, and technical challenges slowed the progress of space station freedom. The ambitious project faced significant financial constraints as the government grappled with shifting priorities and the complexities of maintaining such a mass-scale space program. Despite these challenges, early shuttle missions tested construction techniques in orbit, and that laid the groundwork for what would eventually become the ISS. Then, in the mid-90s, as construction stagnated, the government recognized that completing such a big project would require collaboration on an international scale. Europe, Japan, and Russia, each with their own vision of space exploration, had been working independently on their own space station modules. Faced with increasing costs and risks, these countries decided to join forces, scrapping the separate projects and pooling resources to build a unified space station. The international collaboration led to the creation of the ISS, which became a symbol of global unity in space. The first modules, including critical pieces like the Russian Zarya module and the American Unity module, were launched and assembled in orbit starting in 98. Over the next several years, additional modules got added, including contributions from Japan, Kibo, Europe, Columbus, and other nations. The fusion of diverse designs and technologies helped overcome the early setbacks, but also introduced new challenges in terms of compatibility, coordination, and integration. By the new millennium, the ISS was fully inhabited and operational, though it continued to grow and evolve as more modules were added. The result is a state-of-the-art laboratory, a testament to the perseverance and ingenuity of multiple countries working together towards a common goal in space exploration. As the ISS approaches its third decade in orbit, the aging of its critical systems and modules has become an increasing concern. One of the most significant examples of this issue is the Russian Svezda module, which was one of the first major segments of the ISS to be launched in 2000. Svezda serves a crucial role in maintaining the station's life support systems, power distribution, and propulsion, and also acts as the primary docking point for Russian spacecraft. However, as times passed, Svezda's begun to show signs of wear and tear, and the most pressing issue has been a significant oxygen and pressure leak. First detected in 2019, the leak was initially manageable, but by early 2024, the situation became more alarming. The leak rate, which started off as a minor concern, escalated rapidly in February, then again in April, with a loss of air rising to nearly 2 kilograms per day. This is a critical issue as the ISS is maintained at a constant pressure of 1.013 bar, similar to Earth's sea level pressure, and even a small leak can compromise the integrity of the station's atmosphere. NASA, alarmed by the increasing rate of the leak, raised concerns about the safety of the crew and structural stability of the ISS. Despite the growing severity of the issue, there has been a lack of consensus between Russian and American teams on the cause of the leak and how best to address it. Russia officials have downplayed the situation, stating that they're not overly worried, but NASA's got a different point of view, considering the risk to crew safety and potential long-term consequences. The differences in approach have led to tensions, with NASA recommending that the affected section be sealed off to prevent further damage, which could limit docking options for Russian spacecraft. The leaks created an additional layer of complexity for the ISS's operation, as the Russian and American teams now have to work around the potential hazards. The use of a specialized risk matrix, which rates the likelihood and severity of potential issues, has become a vital tool in managing the situation. If the leak continues to worsen, the Russian segment may need to be isolated from the rest of the ISS, forcing a significant reduction in the station's capabilities. Additionally, the station's systems are experiencing increasingly frequent and urgent issues. 
One example occurred in 2024 when a critical component of the station's urine-to-water conversion system broke down earlier than expected. This system, vital for recycling water and reducing reliance on resupply missions, left the crew scrambling to manage waste storage until a replacement part could get delivered. The shortage of storage space was exacerbated by the delay in getting the new component, which was ultimately fast-tracked to the station aboard a Boeing Starliner test flight. However, the urgency came at a cost. The astronauts' personal items, such as clothing, had to be left behind to make room for the essential equipment. The failure of such key systems underscores the growing importance of backup parts and creative problem-solving to keep the ISS operational. Replacement components are often sent up on resupply missions, but space and weight constraints mean not all potential failures can be anticipated. Crews must adapt quickly to unforeseen challenges, sometimes relying on improvised solutions to avoid disruptions to critical station functions. As the ISS ages, these challenges are becoming more frequent, highlighting the need for constant innovation and planning. Issues extend beyond the station's internal systems. Spacewalks or extravehicular activities EVAs, are often required to repair or replace external equipment, but these missions come with their own set of risks. In mid-2024, a planned spacewalk was cut short when a cooling unit inside an astronaut's spacesuit started leaking water, a recurring issue with aging suit components. This failure not only stopped the spacewalk, but also added to the station's backlog of essential maintenance tasks. Past incidents, such as a near-drowning event back in 2014 when water pooled inside an astronaut's helmet, highlight the potential dangers of equipment malfunctions during EVAs. Even the Russian Orlon spacesuits, which differ in design from the U.S. models, have experienced similar issues in recent years, leading to delays in planned spacewalks. With both suit systems showing signs of age, maintaining the ability to conduct EVAs safely remains a critical concern. These difficulties illustrate the growing strain on the ISS's infrastructure and the persistent need for reliable equipment and efficient logistics to support the astronauts and their mission. These are the typical signs showing that the ISS has endured wear and tear over its 26-year lifespan since the launch of their first module. And of course, air leakage is not the only problem. Other issues include erosion of the outer shell due to impacts with space debris, leading to small cracks in some of the older modules. In space, small meteoroids or orbital debris often travel at speeds of up to 10 times faster than a bullet, making them capable of causing very severe damage upon impact with anything related to human activities. One of the most notable incidents occurred at the end of 2022 when a micrometeoroid collision caused a coolant leak in a Soyuz spacecraft docked at the station. The leak resulted in a stream of coolant spraying into space and rendered the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft unsafe for the crew's return. Consequently, Roscosmos had to launch an empty replacement spacecraft, Soyuz MS-23, to ensure a safe re-entry vehicle for the crew. To mitigate the risk of large debris, the ISS relies on maneuvering capabilities to change its orbit when potential collisions are identified. For example, in November last year, the station performed a debris avoidance maneuver to steer clear of fragments from a defunct defense satellite that broke up back in 2015. The ISS fired its thrusters for five and a half minutes, ensuring a safe distance from the debris, which would have otherwise passed within two miles of the stations. Such maneuvers, known as debris avoidance maneuvers, DAMS are critical for the station's safety and have been performed 39 times since the ISS's inception. In the precarious situation of being on a knife's edge, the space agencies managing the ISS, including NASA, U.S., Roscosmos, Russia, ESA Europe, JAXA, Japan, and CSA Canada, also face difficult decisions regarding the station's future. While NASA aims to keep the ISS operational through 2030, Roscosmos has decided to withdraw from the project after 2028, possibly due to economic and political reasons. In preparation for the eventual retirement of the ISS, NASA signed a contract worth $800 million with SpaceX to develop a spacecraft capable of safely deorbiting the station. The plan involves gradually lowering the ISS's orbital altitude, allowing most of the structure to burn up in the atmosphere and directing any remaining debris into a remote part of the Pacific Ocean. The retirement of the ISS will mark the end of a significant era in space exploration. However, it also opens up opportunities for new initiatives in the field. Many countries and private companies are developing plans for commercial space stations and missions to explore deeper in space, including journeys to the Moon and Mars. 
Though not a top choice, Starship could potentially serve as a space station right now, as it doesn't require connecting pressurized modules, which would reduce the amount of maintenance needed for the station. Ultimately, using Starship as a space station, while just a concept on paper, is highly appealing due to its enormous size. The only space station that could compare in terms of inside space would be NASA's old Skylab outpost that had a diameter of about 6.6 .6 meters. The bigger diameter of Starship's cargo bay would allow for less torque affecting the station's connected segments, creating much sturdier connections compared to the long, flexible structure of the ISS. In addition to NASA eyeing Starship in 2023, the government space agency has long had contingency plans for the ISS. But is it ready now? The answer is certainly not yet. Blue Origin, in conjunction with companies like Redwire, Sierra Space, and Boeing, is building Orbital Reef, a mixed-use business and science park in low Earth orbit. The space station will be a scalable, modular outpost for research, manufacturing, tourism, and more. Its main habitat will contain 10 crew cabins. Both the scope and activities of the modules themselves will be expanded. Orbital Reef will feature Sierra Space's inflatable, large integrated, flexible exhibit, Life Habitat, which will be packed into a new Glenn rocket payload fairing, but then expanded once in orbit. Such a design will provide much greater volume than the discrete, rigid ISS modules launched by the now-retired NASA Space Shuttle and Russian launch vehicles. Sierra Space said back in 2023 that it aims to launch a Pathfinder for life around the end of 2026. That module will have a volume of 10,600 cubic feet. The company's also proposed a larger 49,500 cubic foot module. In comparison, the Kibo module, the largest single ISS module, has a volume of 5,400 cubic feet. As part of the transition to a new generation of space stations, Axiom Space hopes to send its first commercial module to the ISS by next year. Both Axiom and Blue Origin have received support for their initiatives from NASA's Commercial Low Earth Orbit Development Program. The Starlab Space Station, a project involving NanoRocks, Voyager Space, and Lockheed Martin, also got a NASA award and could come as soon as 2028. Other players include California-based startup Vast, which plans to launch its first private station, Haven 1, around mid-2025 on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Old trees die and new ones grow. Thinking positively, the retirement of the ISS will usher in a new era, promising advancements in space exploration driven by the ingenuity and ambition of private companies. With the right support and sufficient involvement and interest, these new orbital homes will serve as hubs for research, innovation, business, and internal collaboration. However, achieving this cannot be done without support from the U.S. government. Unfortunately, at this time, we are seeing many politically motivated actions within the agencies that are responsible for space launches, like the FAA. A clear example is how this agency restricted SpaceX's Starship launches with cumbersome regulations akin to stifling the growth of an entity that is leading the space industry to become a global leader. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you back here next time.